All right, well, welcome back, everybody. This is part two of our video lesson here in Accounting 2 for uh, kind of the chapter four. Chapters one through four really are all kind of included in here uh, and for our full accounting cycle lesson. And this is part two, so we're going to continue on where we left off in part one, which if you recall in part one, we went through, we finished making all of our journal entries. Uh, we've we've, we've done our, our adjusting journal entries. Here's our notes on those. And then we've posted all of our AJEs or adjusting journal entries. Uh, to our journal right here and then the next step is going to be essentially it would be po you posting uh, these entries into the uh, general ledger in our example here I have links here so you don't necessarily have to go through and actually post these things in uh, they've been updating as you go but make sure that you look in here and you understand where these are coming from and where where this column is coming from and understand how this column works right so these are just coming from our journal entries so when you make a journal entry you know for for an increase in widget machine million then debit you need to find your widget machine account and put that in for a million right if cash goes down by a million credits you know in your in your on your journal entry you got to come to your ledger and credit your cash here as well right and this just gives us a summary of the activity in each account like cash, AR, office supplies, whereas the journal entries give us the individual transactions that we're recording as things are happening in the business. Okay, so with that said, uh, and then we've got two, I've got two journal and uh, general ledgers, GL or general ledgers here, and one that's unadjusted and one that has adjustments in it. Uh, and I just separated these out so it's a little bit easier for us to fill out our, uh, our worksheet here. Let's see, bit stuff. Uh, and that's going to be our next step is to complete the worksheet at this point. So to begin working on the worksheet, we want to fill out our unadjusted trial balance column. And so we've got a listing of all of our accounts here on the far left. And we're going to go through and use our unadjusted uh, general ledger, which remember just the only difference is it doesn't have any of um, these adjusting journal entries listed in it. So we're going to use that, uh, the totals from in our unadjusted GL, or general ledger, to populate our first um, two columns for our unadjusted trial balance. So, so you, I'm going to link everything here. So you can do equals or plus, does the same thing, equals or plus in Excel. Uh, and we're going to say we want our unadjusted cash balance, right? So that's here our ending balance in cash in our unadjusted general ledger is 197,351. Accounts receivable has zero ending balance so we collected we received all the cash that we uh, were supposed to receive you know it were we're owed by our customers um, office supplies unadjusted here has let's go to unadjusted office supplies has a $500 uh, debit balance before adjustment notes receivable it's a $10,000 balance prepaid rent $12,000 balance interest receivable where are we? Zero. Unadjusted, right? We haven't done our adjustment for that yet in this uh, column. Okay, office equipment. 5,000. Accumulated depreciation on office equipment should be zero because we haven't done anything there yet. Inventory. 45,008. Vehicle. Zero, right? Because we sold the one vehicle that we bought. Widget machines have a million dollars there. Accumulated depreciation on widget machines, zero. And I'm just jumping back and forth between these tabs here. Marketable securities, $10,000 debit balance. And land, 50,000 balance. Okay. Accounts payable has a $5,500 credit balance, remember? So let me change the view so it's a little easier to see. $5,500 credit balance says it's a payable, right? We've got normal credit balance. Okay, wages payable, nothing, un no unadjusted balance there. Unearned revenue, 120000 Interest payable, zero. Long term debt, <clears throat> a million. And then our common stock, 150000 and we have no retained earnings because this was our first period, right? And we haven't, um, we, a balance in retained earnings 
original, you know, having having something here in our trial balance would indicate that it was a carryover from the prior period. So this is our first uh, period that we're looking at. So we've got a zero balance in there for now, or in other words, no beginning balance in retained earnings. So we have not had any revenues, expenses, or uh, dividends in a prior period. Okay, sales revenue. Let's take a look here. 3,000, okay. Gain on sales. 30,000. Credit balance. Cogs. 49.92. That should be a debit balance. I made a mistake there. Let's fix that. Let's make sure you get your debits and credits on the right side. Sales discount as our debits. Sales returns and allowances, contra revenue account, if you remember. Uh, interest revenue, now we're talking about some more revenue, so that's going to be a credit balance, but we haven't recorded any yet, any unadjusted um, trial balance. Wage expense, we have not recorded any yet. Supplies expense, again, we haven't recorded any yet. Depreciation expense, we definitely haven't recorded any of that. So that'll be an adjusting entry. Uh, same with rent. And same with interest expense. Okay, so now we balance. Uh, we are looking good. Supplies on the street, but prepaid rent. Okay, so we've got everything uh, listed in here. You can see I've got these little check figures at the bottom. You know, your debits should equal your credits. And that equals our little summations that I've input down here as well, so we can confirm that since those numbers matched what we have in here for our totals that we just put in looks like we have everything everything balances so we're we're doing good okay so the next step in our worksheet then would be to actually put our adjustments in right so uh, for this process then we can just go back and look at our actual adjusting entries so we debited interest expense and we credited interest payable so this this is kind of similar to the ledger how you put it in here we just put our debits and credits in uh, but they're all going to be contained within these two columns, right? Okay, so, what did I say? Interest expense, I think, was the first one. So we're debiting interest expense. Interest expense, this is the line for interest expense, so we've debited that. And then interest payable will be our credit. Interest payable, credited. Just linking that over. And that's going to be there, okay? And then we're just going to go down the line and, okay, so we credit depreciation expense for 55 56 for our widget machines. Credit our depreciation expense. And we're going to, uh, or sorry, debit our depreciation expense and credit our accumulated depreciation for the widget machines. Then we've got more. So here we can do another, just go into that formula here in the formula bar put plus, so the original depreciation that we just did uh, a moment ago, and now we can put a plus behind that and click over to our tab and click this depreciation expense as well. So now you'll be picking up both of these within one formula. And we need to credit our accumulated depreciation, so for the office equipment. Okay, supplies expense will be... 350 and we're going to reduce our su supplies or so we're going to credit our supplies by that same 350 next we're going to debit rent expense here for a thousand and we're going to credit prepaid rent for a thousand okay then we're going to debit our interest receivable was one of the next ones here it's an asset we're going to receive. It's similar to accounts receivable, but it's related to interest earned on the money you loaned out. Okay, and then we have a credit for the interest revenue piece here. <clears throat> ah, clicking everywhere. Interest revenue, 47. Okay, good. And then we've got unearned revenue being reduced and actual revenue being recorded by 10,000 each. Let's find our liability for unearned revenue. We're going to debit that to reduce it by 10,000. And then we're going to credit our sales revenue for 10,000. And again, we're just we're just finding the account and then debiting and crediting it just over here. You know, just, just taking all of our journal entries basically and putting the activity here, all the adjusting journal entries. 
Okay, that was that one. Last one's wage expense and wage payable for 2000. So we want to debit our wage expense and we're going to credit our wage payable. Credit, wage payable, debit, wage expense. Okay, cool. Everything's in here. See, these are summations. Those are working. You can double click into any tab to see the, uh, that's what I'm doing there. You'll see the formula up here in the formula bar. You can see this is the sum of F3 through F4. That's how that works. And our debits equal our credits, which is a good thing. And if you wanted to double check yourself, 23244 would be your debits and your credits. So we can look back and we could do a little summation here just if we wanted to. 23244, that was the sum of all the debits on this page. So the sum of them, debits on that page, equal the sum of the debits on this page. So that tells us that we did indeed get all of our adjusting entries uh, uh, put into these two columns. Okay, so now we've got our unadjusted trial balance, we have our adjustments, and now we're gonna adjust this unadjusted trial balance to reflect this activity. And the way that we do that is just like we do in the general ledger or any other debit and credit situation is if you have debits and you credit that account, it will reduce it, right? And if you have a credit balance and you debit it, then it will uh, reduce it as well, depending on what type of account it is, right? So there's no adjustments for cash, so we just carry cash straight over. Nothing interesting there. Now, in office supplies, we started with a debit and we credited that account. So our debit is higher than our credit. So we're going to still have a debit balance. It's just going to be reduced by that 350, right? So we end up with 150. Notes receivable, again, did not have any um, adjustments. So that just comes straight over. Here, no, uh, prepaid rent, we started with 12,000 and we a debit balance and we credited it, credited it for 1,000. So it's going to be reduced by 1,000. Um, interest receivable, we started with a zero balance and then we debited it for 47. So now we have a 47 debit balance. Office equipment, also no activity there. So just it just carries over, right? That's what we're doing. We're just going, we're going this way on each of these things. Okay, so let me make sure I've got all that. Okay, our, um, so our uh, accumulated appreciation did not have a starting balance. Then we credited it, credited, we did a credit for 125, so now we should have a 125 credit balance. Inventory just comes straight over. Vehicles, still zero, so we don't carry anything over there. Widget machines, we did a credit on accumulated depreciation and our adjustments for uh, 55, 56, so we'll carry that over. Basically saying zero to start, plus we credited 55, 56, leaves us with a credit balance, right? Okay, no activity in our adjustments for those two or for accounts payables. Accounts payable. Uh, wages payable, we started with nothing and then we credited, did a credit there. So we have a $2,000 credit balance. Now, kind of the reverse situation that we, that we had um, on like office supplies and stuff, we have unearned revenue, which is a liability. So it starts with a credit balance and we debit that for 10,000. So the credit will be reduced you know, the larger gets reduced by the smaller to leave us with 110,000. Pretty easy math, right? Okay, we've got a credit here again, starting with zero. No activity for long-term debt, common stock in our uh, adjustments. And retained earnings, yeah, nothing there, still no beginning balance, right? Okay, so we have a $30,000 credit here for sales revenue, and we added another 10,000, so two credits, right? We add those together. If you have two debits or two credits, those just add on to each other. Gain on sale, no adjustments there. No adjustments for COGS or sales discounts. That's all just coming over straight. And then interest revenue, that these last entries, they were all from the adjustments. So I'm going to just drag this down. So what I did is I did a formula to say, give me that cell that's highlighted there, E30. And then you can take your cursor, make it where it turns into a little black cross there. Hold your left click button down, you can just drag that down, and then it does the same formula in all those, and it updates for the location, so. Okay, so now we've posted all our, in, all our adjustments. We've got an adjusted trial balance now that all these figures in the unadjusted have now been adjusted. Uh, we, can, we can see that our debits equal our credits, so we are happy there. And that is good. And we can also see that if we were to go back to this unadjusted general ledger, 
keep in mind that we the worksheet is just somewhere to show your activity uh, and have as a kind of a summary. I've got this link so you don't again you don't need to go through the ledger necessarily and post every one of these. Um, but in an up and in an upcoming assignment, you will need to do that. So make sure that you understand how this works. And if, as you can see here, we have interest expense being debited, you know, and you see the interest payable to be credited above. So we're really doing the same thing, just taking the debits and credits, and we'd be posting those in here in and the adjusted ones, right? And we're just reflecting that activity also. So it's a lot of ways just to say the same thing, to show the same information in a lot of different formats, basically. Okay, so yeah, so that's that's the difference. And you can see here that the totals after our adjustments, one, three, four, seven, three, nine, four, matches up with our total debits and credits here as well. So that indicates that we did pick up all the adjusting entries in here correctly, which we already kind of knew because we went back and checked the total of the debits and credits here, but it just tells us that we did all our math going across right and all that. So that's good. It's not, never a bad idea to check your figures as you go, to look at things. Self-review is one of the most important skills that you should learn and real-world skills. And that's one of the biggest things I would see with new hires that I worked with is that people coming out of college wouldn't really check their work very well. And then you'd end up with um, just things. And, you know, it's always a learning experience, you know, and you learn on the job. But the more self-review, the better you get at making sure the way you're handing your... your um, your coworkers and your bosses and stuff is accurate, uh, the better. That's a huge plus for, for career stuff. So anyway, always a good idea. Double check everything. And Excel makes it pretty easy, right? And, and we can see totals and all that stuff very easily. Okay, so cool. Now we've got adjusted figures, right? So we have our adjusted figures. And with our adjusted figures now, we can go through and prepare our financial statements. And then after we do that, we'll come back and do um, we'll put we'll do our closing entries here, and I'll show you how those work. And then we'll also show how the closing entries uh, can are posted into um, the uh, general ledger as well, right? Okay, so let's prepare our financial statements here. So I'm just going to link everything across because we already have this template. So our total sales revenue is forty thousand, and then we have got some. Uh, sales returns and sales discounts and all that good stuff. So let me open up my, let me grab that too. Bear with me for one quick moment here. All right. Okay, so we've got our sales. We've got our, um, like I said, sales discounts and sales uh, returns and allowances are going to be reductions from our sales. So this is gr called gross sales. So all, the, and gross means total, like without any reduction. Net, like net income, netting things is, is reducing taking one thing subtract it from another to get the end result the gross means the the pre netted figure so uh, so sales discounts will come straight off of our uh, trial uh, off our worksheet here and the worksheet's a nice place just to, to have in front of you to um, have as a summary to be able to, to prepare the financial statements here is everything's in there easily um, so okay sales whoop, I got the sales returns we want sales discounts okay so sales discounts and then sales returns and allowances okay and then we're going to take the sum of those so 40,000 minus 599 minus the returns and allowances and discounts gets us uh, 39,351 okay now another new thing that we learned in chapter 4 is um, the reduction in net sales with, by COGS gets us to this concept of gross profit, right? So let's go find our COGS. 
Okay, so now, uh, yeah, subtracting out cogs, it gets us 34359 So in other words, that's to say we sold $40,000 worth of stuff, and then with the discounts, the returns, and also taking into account the cost of the things that we sold uh, that we had to buy first right before we could sell them, we actually made $34,359. On the on the sales directly, but then and then we come down and we talk about our operating expenses, right? So we've got some some expenses of operating our business. We've got wage expense. We've got supplies expense. We've got depreciation expense, and we've got rent expense. And as you can see, not only can you link cells for numbers, but you can also link it just for the words, whatever else, any whatever's in there, which is handy as you're going back and trying to populate the account titles. Okay, so wage expense ends up being 2000 Supplies expense ends up being 350 We want to pull from our adjusted tab, right? Um, depreciation expense is 5681 And rent expense was 1000 Okay, now I'm going to go to my little auto sum here. And if you wanted to write, write that, you could write this in yourself to summarize things, too. It's just real basic Excel stuff. You could put, if you, if you didn't have that formula, you didn't use the auto sum, but you just go equals sum parentheses. You can just drag that over that whole range and then hit enter. And now you can see up here you've got this formula in here. Okay, so our total operating expenses are uh, 9031. And let's see. I think, I think make sure we've got everything in here. Okay, so other income and expenses then are going to be some of that those um, line items that reflect things that don't happen as the principal business um, operating uh, you know, purpose of the business, I guess, if you will. Uh, so gain on sales is going to be one type um, that you would put in there because that sale is like, for example, selling that car was just kind of a weird one-off experience. Um, Interest revenue and interest expense always also go down there. Interest expense. Okay, so did I get gain on sale? No. Okay, gain on sale and interest revenue. Oh, let me I pulled that from the from the. It didn't really matter, but I pulled it from the unadjusted column. So let's make sure to keep it consistent. Pull pull everything. Link everything from the, these adjusted columns here. Interest revenue. And remember, interest expense here is a debit balance, so that's going to be a reduction. So we do want to do minuses here. Usually, like you can see, expenses are a reduction in gross profit, but unless you have pluses, you know, unless you have debits and credits in the same column, like you do here and you do here, then you don't need to use negatives. But when you have stuff that's positive and negative within one, little summation we'll call them, then you use the negative signs. Okay, so we've got total other income and expense, and now we are going to take our uh, gross profit minus our operating expenses minus our um, total other income and expense. And that looks like it leaves us with a net loss. Let me see, is that right? Thirty thousand. Oh, I'm sorry. Nope, I made a mistake there. Plus, right? Because we ended up with positive, so it was other income, not. Um, to, it wasn't all expense, right? I did a minus sign here where I should have done a plus. Okay, so we take our gross profit minus our operating expenses plus our other income gets us a net income of fifty-one thousand two oh nine. Okay. And then remember, we've got a zero balance to start because we just started this business for retained earnings. Net income here, I'm just going to link those, is 51209. We had zero dividends. So, really, our ending retained earnings are um, oops, capital retained earnings here. Is that supposed to be, oh, is it January? This is just January, right? Okay, so retained earnings as of 1 January 31st. For our one month, month ending 131, yeah. Okay. 
Cool. So our ending retained earning is just the 51209 because we didn't have any dividends or any other stuff there. Okay, so now for our assets, let's go back to our trial balance, and our assets are all here at the top. So again... We're gonna, so we're going to split these things out to, remember, by current and non-current now. So we've got cash, accounts receivable, office supplies, prepaid rent, uh, let's see, what else? Interest receivable, I believe we're going to receive that, whoops, quickly, within a year at least, interest receivable. Why am I doing that? Ah, I need the name. Okay. Let's see here. Get my phone notes out. <laughs> so cash here is 197. Remember, accounts receivable is zero. So you know what? I'm actually going to leave that. Sorry, let me, let me redo this. Let me leave that off. I think I need the extra space that I have in my template here. Um, so we have no... Cash, prepaid rent, inventory, office supplies, notes receivable, and interest receivable. It's all going to be our current stuff. Prepaid rent here has a balance of 11000 Inventory has a balance of 45008 Office supplies. <clears throat> There's a balance of 5,000. Oh, no, that's office equipment. Office supplies has 150. Notes receivable. Do, 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 do. Where are we here? Notes receivable, 10,000. And interest receivable. Where's my interest receipt? There it is, 47. There's the number I was trying to get. Okay, we're going to sum those. 2, 6, 3, 5, 56 then. Okay, and then our non-current assets that we have here include our office equipment, right? And remember, our contra asset for accumulated depreciation uh, will be shown in the asset column as well. And the widget machines. And what else do we have? Marketable securities and land. So if you're going through and doing this on a test or something, you can mark these off as you go is probably a good idea so you make sure that you get every single one of them i think i think i've got them all we'll, we'll double check at the end and then if we don't we'll fix our issues okay so office equipment has a five thousand dollar balance it has accumulated depreciation here of 125 remember to make that negative because it's a contra asset so it sucks the value down basically if you will widget machines or what a million right million and then we have an accumulated depreciation here of 5556 same formula there we're just summing those two together to get the net uh, book value there okay and then marketable securities has a 10,000 and land has 50,000 cool and I'm going to sum all those things I get 1,586,431. Okay. All right, let's put our whoops, current liabilities in now. So we have got accounts payable. We've got uh, wages payable. We've got unearned revenue. We've got interest payable somewhere. Okay, and here's a little um, extra thing here that is new. We didn't this this one. You probably won't have to do this on exam necessarily, but I, you know since we're doing this together, I'm going to show you a little bit of um, extra little things to think about. Uh, we have a to we have total long uh, term debt of I think what million dollars, right? We look on our TB, we have a million dollars. Do, 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 Somewhere. Uh, notes payable. Look for the big one. There it is. Okay, yeah, I call it long-term debt. We have a million dollars of long-term debt. 
remember our cutoff between current and long term, or you know, short term, long term. Usually in accounting, we call current um, the current portion instead of saying short term. I'm not sure why we don't just say short term. It's you'd be understood if you said short term. But um, anyway, the current portion. We're, we're, remember that that cutoff to put something into the non-long term section and current liabilities is one year. And so a portion of this debt that we have of a million dollars will be paid within a year because we're paying it back. I believe our notes said we're going to pay this back. Um, uh, first loan payment, principal is paid at December 31st. So we're going to pay the first principal payment at December 31st, right? So. Uh, so we're going to pay one-fifth of this million dollars back every December 31st for the next five years. So that first payment is within the first year. So we'll take the one, one-fifth of that, or let's go like this, we'll go equals the million dollars divided by five, right? It's one-fifth. This, this is the payment we're going to make in December 31st, which is within the year time frame um, of this set of financial statements, right? Okie doke. So let's do that. And then we can say, okay, well, everything else out of this, take our million minus the current portion. So 800,000 is going to be paid after a year, right? So cool. Okay. And then let's fill out the totals for our other accounts. We have accounts payable. Let's find that guy. We got 55.50 wages payable, 2,000 unearned revenue. Payable. Okay, let's just summarize all those. And then our total liabilities is both the current and the non current stuff, right? So that's everything. Okay, 1 million, 121, 667. Okay, and then our retained earnings, remember, it just comes down from our statement of retained earnings. Okay, and now we've got common stock in our ledger here, our worksheet, 150,000. So total stockholders equity then becomes 201209. And let's, now we're going to take our total liabilities plus total equity. We are missing something. So we do not balance. Oh, look, our variance is 263,556, which is our total assets. Oops. So when we added this summation, we made an error here. That was my fault. Uh, I should have gone like this. We don't want to sum everything because we're adding this twice because this is already a sum. So we need to fix our formula here. Drag that down so it just picks up the total, which is the total of all those, the sum of those, plus the rest of the stuff. There we go. Now we're looking better. So that's one thing. If you ever get a variance pop up, look for the same number somewhere above and you'll, you'll probably find your mistake um, that way a lot of times. Okay, cool. So we're done with our financial statements. We've got everything in there. We've got categories. We've got um, current long-term stuff. We've got totals. And remember, if we had now, if we were to prepare this next month in uh, February, our starting balance for retained earnings would now would, would now be 51,209, right? And then we would do all this again, and you would get a new net income. You might have dividends, and that would then get you a new retained earnings as well, right? Can, you're always updating that retained earnings every time period as you go. Sweet. Okay, so we are done with our financials. Now, a couple little last steps here. We are going to prepare closing entries. Um, and I'm just going to do those in the worksheet. But remember, these are actual journal entries that we would need to post in our journal. And we would, and I guess I will I'll show you how. Um, I'll post those. I'll, I'll post those for the ledger. I'm not going to do the journal entries for them. Um, I'm just going to do them on here. But remember that if we're in an accounting system, you really technically you have to have all these different steps to make everything go through the, the whole process. But I will say in a current, in a modern accounting system like a QuickBooks or any other software, you don't actually do closing entries. You just click a button or, or you just, it just automatically does this in behind the scenes kind of. But it's good to know what, what's happening here. Okay, so remember that when we are closing our accounts, we're essentially doing this right here we're updating our retained earnings account and we are closing our net income and we're closing our dividends here and i am not going to use the income summary i'm just going to close everything straight to retained earnings because i think that's a more efficient method so our 
Now, as we've seen, our retained earnings is zero right now, right? Unadjusted balance here is zero, just like it's zero here. We need to add 51,209 into retained earnings to end it, so it ends up having that that balance basically. Okay, so remember that this 51,209 is comprised of all of this stuff, right? It's all these income statement accounts basically. There's no dividends, we don't care about those in this example. So really we just want to close all of the income statement stuff or the revenues and expenses. And all of those things are actually shown here in the bottom. So to do our closing entry, what we're, what we're essentially doing is moving all this activity just up here into one column, if you will. So here's all the here's all your credits, here's all your debits that go that went on the income statement. We want the difference between those to move up to retained earnings, or which is the difference between those being net, net income, right? So to move these accounts, we essentially need to zero these all out, right? So we have a credit balance in sales revenue, which is the normal balance. Now to zero it, we are going to debit it, right? So it has a credit balance. Now we're going to debit it. And just as we saw as we moved across this way, right? Credit plus credit equal credit equal higher credit, right? You're adding these two credits together. We are now going to be reducing this. We're doing our debit here. That means that's going to bring this credit to zero, right? So we start. We would start with the forty thousand. Oh, then we subtract the forty thousand, so it's going to go to zero. And that's the point of doing all these all of these closing entries is to get these temporary accounts that we are closing to be zero when you are done. So it's pretty easy. You don't have to think about like what your entries are going to be. You just need to do the you need to do the same number that's in the ending balance for that account but in the opposite side right if you have a debit you need to credit it if you have a credit you need to debit it okay so I'm gonna put formulas in for those okay so now and we can see our our totals don't balance here by 51209 which is the same thing as the net income right that's what we said before the difference between all the revenues and expenses was 51209 so the final piece to balance our Closing entry then is to put in our um, oh we're missing eleven cents somewhere fifty one fifty one you know I'm gonna do it like this I'm gonna go equals this this is kind of our plug which is equal to our net income so we take the sum of all those minus the sum of everything in this column and we get fifty one two oh nine if you do it with a formula like, like that, you get this exact zero, not little 11 cents or anything like that. And so this 51209 is the same thing that we've done shown here. That's net income, right? And you can see, so we've added retained earnings, added our net income into retained earnings to get the retained earnings to a 51209 balance, which goes down here. And with our closing entry, we've now done the same thing, right? And so in, in this post-close trial balance, you know, or after this trial balance that's after we close now, we're going to carry all this this stuff further on over and we're going to say okay so we had zero to start we credited retained earnings so we have a credit balance of retained earnings right we had a, a 40,000 credit balance in revenue then we debited it with our closing entry so all of our so all of these should be zero now same thing you know because that's what we did that's the whole point of our entry there was to zero out all these accounts and put the difference into retained earnings and then otherwise, we are just going to go through and copy all of our, you can just put it equals over to that, drag it down, put it equals on your adjusted trial balance that way and drag it down so that you pick up all the totals there. And we should be good to go. Some 42 cents. I don't know why we're off 42 cents, but <laughs> I'm going to worry about that for now. If you want to, you can delete out your formulas that didn't pick up anything there. It doesn't, it doesn't really affect anything. Okay, so now we are looking pretty good. And uh, yeah, that's basically the end of the uh, whole accounting cycle, more or less. So we've got our financial statements, we've got our entries, we've got our adjusting journal entries, we've got an adjusted GL, uh, and now we've recorded these closing entries, 
And again, remember that when we do these debits and credits to these accounts, technically those would be shown as a journal entry as well over here. So I might ask you on an exam or a quiz or something to write a, a, a closing entry. And it would essentially look, if you were to write it on paper, I'll hide some account, it would look like this. One more hide, just to show you. So this is what your journal entry would be, maybe without totals. So this is a this is be your closing entry, and you'd need to post this into the general journal to get it to actually work if you were doing this process. The worksheet is just a um, kind of a summary tool, presentation tool. Okay, so that's good. We're done, basically. The one last thing I want to show you here relates to the closing entries. So what I want to do with the closing entries is they do need to be reflected here in the ledger. So, for example, all of these... So wherever we had, see, we, we in credited interest expense, right? Or sorry, debited, where's interest? Uh, that was in, yeah, interest expense was a debit balance, so we credited it to get it to go to zero. So in our ledger, then we would have to, technically would have to go through and credit all those as well. I'm just putting equals this, because they're all the same balance. We're just getting, see, we're getting those to go to zero. So we'd be zeroing out everything. All of our temporary accounts, right? Our income statement accounts. Here we have revenue, which is a credit balance. So we would want to, we, we debited that to get that to go to zero there. Okay, sales returns and allowances would be zeroed. Zero, zero, zeroed. Now oh, we would need one more column here. Darn. So 49.92 was the amount before we did our. Oh, ah. Here we can really, if you want to get it to go to total zero, we can just link to the balance it was before we closed it. Okay, gain on sale is a credit before we close. So we're going to debit that to get that to go zero. Ah, again, a couple spots here where we have to. Expand this just a little bit. You won't have to do this on your version because I'm going to use this copy that I'm working on right now as the final vert, as the one I give you as a template, basically. So don't don't worry. You're not going to have to put those new lines in. They're all they will already be there when uh, I give you a template here in a minute. All right, so we got a credit balance of forty thousand. So our close on this one would be to debit that for forty thousand. And then we should have, um, we should need to post the retained earnings then, which would be the, you know, the, the credit of all of our closes there. I feel like I'm missing one somewhere. Let's see, we still have 49.92. That need to get updated there. Again, you won't you won't have to, you shouldn't have to have to do that. Let me make sure I fix that one. The other one that we just fixed that we put the extra line in that was here and that was okay. Okay. Do, do oh sales revenue still has a balance, so it must be pulling from the wrong cells. Pull that down. Okay. Okay, now. Now we're looking good. Something got off on here. We can troubleshoot by clicking into the formula and looking to see if we missed something here. Somewhere our formula is not picking something up. 35,009. those ones because we added these extra rows in it's pulling from it's not giving us the whole total Oops. Ah. we don't actually need that there we just want that on this part 
And I think there was another spot maybe where that got the same as this one there. And this one here. That's okay. Okay, so now we're good. Check figures are zeros. So I just wanted to highlight that to show you that you need to put in in the ledger. What we're doing with these closing entries is actually zeroing these totals for rent expense for all the temporary accounts go to zero. And the idea on that is that when you roll this whole thing over to the next period, first for example for February, you start with a zero balance in all of your temporary accounts and you start reporting all your sales revenue and all that stuff again. But whereas retained earnings is a permanent account, it rolls over it has a balance to begin. Common stock has a balance to begin. All the things that you have, this this will end up being now your beginning balance, right? And you would start all over again doing all the transactions and everything um, using these figures as your starting point, right? Cool. Okay, so that's the whole lesson there. That's the end of it, and um, that's what I would expect you know that you guys to have this whole set done when you're finished, like just like I did. Just like I do here when um, when you have finished for the full 10 points and uh, yeah I will put this blank template up for you to work off of so you'll have to go through and put all the stuff in um, and follow along with my video but a uh, good way to get some points and a good way to hopefully solidify your knowledge on a bunch of this stuff because it's a little tricky and I hope seeing it you know walk through like this is uh, helps you get it down so all right guys good luck and i am going to post the template and these videos up onto canvas now all right see you soon